everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Dr. Daniela Fisher and I am a board certified anesthesiologist, mom of three, wife, and soon to be a puppy mommy. In a recent Instagram post, I asked you guys to tell me what your greatest concerns about undergoing anesthesia were. And by far, the greatest response that I got was, I am afraid that I am not gonna wake up from anesthesia. So in this video, I thought that I would address just that. What is your risk of dying under anesthesia? Who are the people that are at greatest risk? But most importantly, what are the amazing things that have happened over the last 60 or 70 years that make anesthesia so much safer today than it ever has been in the past? Check it out, guys. In honor of today's video, I'm wearing this Curious George t-shirt where he's out for the count because he had some ether. My sister gave me this shirt in 1996. That was before I even went to medical school and I certainly did not know that I was gonna be an anesthesiologist at that time. I actually thought I wanted to be an endocrinologist in those days. And so I don't know if my sister like just had some kind of premonition about my personality and was like, yeah, she's going into anesthesia, but this shirt's iconic. It's always gonna be in my closet. I absolutely love it. Anyhow, my goal in today's video is to empower you guys with knowledge so that the next time you have an anesthetic procedure, you can go in with facts instead of anxiety. Researching for this video was so fascinating and the statistics of death under anesthesia over the last 70 years were pretty mind blowing. Back in the 1940s, the risk of dying under anesthesia was one in 1,000 people. I know, crazy, right? By the 1970s, that was down to one in 10,000 people. By the 1990s, that was down to one in 100,000 people. And today, the risk of dying under anesthesia is a mere 1.1 person per million in the population per year. So that crazy decrease in deaths under anesthesia really begs the question, what have we done over the last several years to make anesthesia so much more safe? And that is what I'm gonna answer for you guys today. But I would be remiss if I didn't say that as anesthesia has advanced, so is surgery and so has medicine. And those advances in surgery and medicine really do contribute to anesthesia safety as well. For example, Back in the 1980s, if you had to get your gallbladder out, that was a huge incision in your abdomen. I mean, that was real stress on the body. It came with a lot of risks and the recovery was really difficult. Today, all you need if you wanna have your gallbladder out is a couple of holes in your belly, a laparoscopic procedure, a robotic procedure, and one night in the hospital and you're out of there. In addition to that, medicine has really made anesthesia more safe. For example, anytime somebody is coming to the hospital for a major anesthetic procedure, we send them to either their internal medicine doctor or their family medicine doctor to get pre-op testing because we really wanna make sure that you are optimized, meaning you're in tip-top shape, before you come for a general anesthetic. Now, your doctor might get blood tests, they might send you for a echocardiogram, they might send you to a lung doctor for lung function tests, just depending on your personal past medical history. But all the information that we get from those tests helps us to tailor an anesthetic specifically to you and your medical needs. So it's really incredibly helpful and it also really contributes to patient safety. In the same way that surgery technique has improved, so has anesthetic technique. And in fact, we have so many more options in terms of anesthesia today than we ever have had before. For example, in the 1940s, if you had a really sick heart and you had to have anesthesia, you just had to go to sleep and undergo the surgery despite the risks of having general anesthesia. Today, when people have really sick hearts or really sick lungs, we have other options available to us and sometimes we can utilize those other options such as regional anesthesia. And when I say regional anesthesia, I just mean epidurals, spinals. We also have ultrasound guided nerve blocks and we can do those in patients and then just give patients a little bit of sedation instead of putting them to sleep under general anesthesia. But all of those things allow us to really make better decisions for the patients because we have more tricks in our bag, more options available to us. In addition to that, drugs today are way better. I mean, today we have so many different and better antibiotics. We have way better pain medicines. We have better inhalational anesthetics. 
we don't use ether anymore. And the inhalational anesthetics of old were really, really not that great. They caused what we call cardiovascular depression. And all that means is that those drugs made an already bad heart worse and they also caused low blood pressure. But today, anesthetic agents are so much safer. And although they're not perfect, they do have better side effect profiles and less systemic effects, which is good for you. What else has improved anesthesia safety over the last 60 to 70 years? Well, definitely anesthesia training. I mean, back in the 1920s, if you needed to undergo anesthesia, you just underwent anesthesia by some medical professional that had undergone an apprenticeship. So that could be a nurse, it could be a surgeon that had done some kind of apprenticeship training and was putting you to sleep. It wasn't until the 1930s that anesthesia residencies were established where anesthesiology residents had to undergo thousands of hours of training in the operating room, take rigorous board exams and meet rigorous standards before they could take care of patients. In addition to that, our certifying board and our overseeing board have come up with what we call ASA guidelines. And that's just guidelines for anesthesiologists that are based on data and evidence, which has also really improved patient safety over the last two to three decades. Technology, as we know, has improved everybody's lives in so many ways. And likewise, technology and anesthesia has improved dramatically. The one thing that pops into my mind are ventilators, and I know that everybody is familiar with ventilators because of COVID. Back before the 1960s, ventilators were not even seen in an operating room. If an anesthesiologist had to ventilate a patient, they had a mask on their face and an ambu bag, or they were ventilating with an ambu bag through a breathing tube into the patient. But around the 1960s, ventilators started showing up in the operating rooms, and today, ventilators are so sophisticated that they allow us to really manipulate the vent settings to best suit patients that have certain lung problems, certain heart problems, and even obesity. We can do ventilator settings that are so specific to the patient that it has really improved patient safety to a large degree in the operating room. In addition to that, monitoring in the operating room has gotten so much better just in the last 20 to 30 years. I know that all of you guys have put on one of these before. This is called a pulse oximeter. Let me turn it on and we can see what this pulse oximeter is reading. This little device that I paid $25 for on Amazon was not available to anesthesiologists taking care of patients in an operating room before 1987. I know, I was in seventh grade. Today, you can get them basically anywhere and they're so inexpensive. And what they tell us is what the patient's oxygenation is. And the reason that that's important, obviously under anesthesia is because we wanna make sure that we are ventilating and oxygenating a patient. And before the 1980s, if an anesthesiologist wanted to know if a patient was oxygenated, they had to look at their lips to make sure they were pink instead of blue, or they had to listen to them breathing. But this really, really revolutionized anesthesia safety. So the big takeaway message is there have been so many things that have improved anesthesia safety over the last 70 years that it is so rare for somebody to actually die under anesthesia. But at this point, you guys must be wondering, well, doesn't somebody ever die under anesthesia? I mean, it was 1.1 person per million per population per year. So who is it that is dying of anesthesia? Well, the people that are at greatest risk for dying from anesthesia are people that are 85 and older. And that's just because those people are most likely to have the sickest heart and the sickest lungs. But having a sick heart or a sick lungs is not enough to cause you to die from anesthesia. It is only the very sickest hearts and the very sickest lungs that are at risk for dying from anesthesia. And that doesn't even mean that those people die. And the reason for that is because anesthesiologists are trained to handle really sick hearts and really sick lungs and get them through anesthesia despite those problems. There are a couple of other things that both young and old people can die from under anesthesia. For example, a reaction to an antibiotic or a blood clot to the lung that comes from some other part of the body or from a drug reaction called malignant hyperthermia. Malignant hyperthermia is when a patient reacts to either an inhaled anesthetic or to a drug that we use called succinylcholine. And patients that have a predisposition, a genetic predisposition to having a reaction to these drugs will exhibit muscle rigidity, a severe increase in temperature and a rapid heart rate. What happens is that their muscles start to break down, 
potassium starts to spill out of the muscles and that can lead to cardiac arrest. But as I mentioned, this is actually a disease that comes with a genetic predisposition. So one thing that you can do is you can ask one of your family members or all of your family members that are blood related to you if they have ever had a high fever under anesthesia. And if they have, then it's probably prudent for you to go get a genetic test to make sure that you are not at risk for having malignant hyperthermia. So you guys, the big point in today's video is just to show you that I know that so many people are afraid of undergoing anesthesia, but all of the incredible things that have happened over the last 50, 60, 70 years in terms of surgical technique, medicine advances, and improvements in anesthesia techniques, drugs, technology, monitors, all and, and certainly training of anesthesiologists have all made anesthesia today so much more safe than it's ever been before. And I want you guys to feel good about that information. I want you not to be scared the next time you have anesthesia. And I want you to know that your anesthesiologist is there to get you through it in one piece. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next one.